Hello everyone, and welcome to the Wolfology channel. As you may have noticed from watching our previous videos, we frequently discuss about investing. In this video, we will learn more about investing, stocks, the market, and many other topics. We're going to talk about something quite basic in this video. What are a stock and a market, respectively? A stock today essentially only represents ownership in a company as a security. In essence, having stock in a firm gives you a claim to its assets and profits. Therefore, since you own a portion of that business, you practically own their buildings, their equipment, and all the money they produce. Therefore, owning shares in a corporation or having stocks in it, which are synonyms, means the same thing. As a result, if you own shares in a corporation, you effectively own a portion of it and are entitled to its assets and profits. A very crucial topic now is why a firm would issue stock or shares. And why would anyone want to invest in corporate stock? This question has a very straightforward answer, I suppose. So picture this. Consider yourself a business owner. You enjoy using electronics, so let's assume you sell some of them. You produce and market electronic goods, which you market to members of your family, your relatives, and your local community, and you're earning well off of that. You can only believe that electronic products will be quite popular in the future. You wish to expand internationally or perhaps nationally, correct? Consequently, you wish to sell much more globally, do you then? I assume you need to open more stores. Which method would you use? You require money. So, let's say you were able to earn $100,000 this year by selling electronics in your neighborhood. You're now the owner of your business. This is your business. Let's say that the VWN for electrical item will be its name. You're the owner of this $100,000 a year business. You now desire to expand nationwide and open shops everywhere. Okay, let's imagine you want to open five businesses. And it will cost you roughly a million dollars to open each one. Having electronic stores is therefore quite expensive. Again, this is only an illustration. No need for numbers to make sense. Where will you acquire the five million dollar then? Five million dollar cannot be acquired by earning one hundred thousand dollar annually. It will take far too long doing it. Thus, you must ask investors to lend you the money, correct? So, in order for your company to give you the money you need, you're going to sell shares of stock in it. You will thus tell investors, look, I will offer you a part of my firm. I will give you shares in my company if you need $5 million in total to open these stores. Okay, so let's suppose you handed them 50%, so perhaps you will give them a 50% stake in your business. In order for you to open all those stores, they grant you $5 million. You'll be able to earn a lot more money by owning all those stores. Let's say you can earn $2 million annually with five outlets. Therefore, even though you currently only own 50% of your company, the remaining 60% is worth significantly more because you are now earning much more money. Therefore, 60%. In opposed to earning only $100,000 annually, you will still earn $1 million annually. Therefore, even though you own less shares in your firm, you still make a lot more money because it is much larger, am I correct? Therefore, this purchase is far larger than this pie. Therefore, if you don't want to expand organically because that can take too long, it's actually a very smart idea to sell shares in your firm when you want to grow your company and you need the funds, right? Therefore, why would a business publish stocks or bonds? Because they desire to develop. They are prepared to sell you a portion of their business in order to obtain the funding they need to expand. Now, why would an investor want to buy shares in a company again? Very simply to take part in that company's growth since the investor will now own a portion of the business. So, by simply owning the shares, they will profit from the company's success and participate in it without having to do any work, correct? Therefore, someone else will perform the work while also taking payment. Now, what we want to do as traders is search for mispricing in a stock's price. Because a stock has a price when we buy or sell it. If we can figure out whether a price is too high or too low and identify the pricing error, we can profit from the mispricing. This is the fundamental reason why businesses issue shares and why traders or investors would desire to purchase shares of a company. How can you purchase stocks now? How do you purchase stocks? 
There are now two methods for purchasing stocks, depending on whether the stock is private or the company you are purchasing is publicly traded. Let's examine how and where one might purchase stock. Well, that depends on whether you want to purchase shares in a public corporation or a private one. What are private and public companies exactly? A private corporation is essentially one that doesn't trade on a public exchange and has a small number of owners. A large corporation that trades on a public exchange is referred to as a public company. Therefore, when we discuss Apple, Amazon, Netflix, all these large corporations, and Facebook, we are talking about public firms. Currently, they were private businesses before becoming public ones. At one time, these were smaller businesses that didn't trade on an exchange. Okay, so, using the same example from earlier, if you wanted to start a business selling electronics, it would initially be a private company, correct? You would have a small number of investors, and that would be it. No one would know about it. The process of a private firm going public is something else that we will cover in our next videos. But for the time being, this is all you need to know about that. So it follows that you cannot simply stroll down the street, observe a restaurant being opened, and decide to invest in it. Because any privately owned restaurant and any store owned by an individual are both private businesses. You can't just enter and announce that you're buying stock in the company. You have to be acquainted with the owner in order to purchase shares in a private corporation. You must either be a close friend or relative of the business owner or a staff member, or you must be a seasoned investor. Therefore, you need to have a lot of money and be wealthy. You are only permitted to invest in a private company in this manner. Investment in private enterprises is therefore challenging. And as a result, it can be difficult for private businesses to obtain funding when they need it because they need to know someone who can provide them with the finances or they need to know some people who have a lot of money. On the other hand, anyone can invest in public enterprises. How much money you have doesn't matter. The owner need not be known to you. No one at the company has to be familiar to you. Hey, I want to buy shares in Facebook. You can just call your broker, call the bank, or contact your broker. Or you can buy the shares on your own using one of the apps that are currently available on the market. There is a significant difference in private businesses. Since these are the only shares and stocks that we can acquire and that are the only stocks that trade on exchanges, we will only discuss public firms when discussing the buying and selling of stocks in this video and any subsequent ones. Exchanges do not deal in private corporations. And once more, in order to invest in a private firm, you must either be a qualified investor or know the proprietors or someone who works there. An accredited investor denotes that you earn and it varies. There are variations for each nation and state. Let's take Canada as an example, where you must have earned more than, I believe, $200 to $400,000 each year for the previous three years. Additionally, you need to have assets worth more than $2 million registered in your name. Therefore, you must be financially literate and wealthy enough to comprehend how private corporations operate. Again, purchasing shares in private corporations is highly difficult, while purchasing stocks or shares in public companies is fairly simple. And that's what we'll be examining in the upcoming video, how we might purchase shares or stocks and benefit in the near future. Let's now talk about the fundamentals of a market. Everyone is familiar with the market, right? We visit markets each and every day. Basically, a market is merely a place where you may go to purchase and sell goods. People go there to conduct e-commerce. There are many different markets available nowadays. Markets are distinguished by the product they specialize in, aren't they? There are markets for groceries, electronics, clothing, and other products. As a result, some markets are quite narrow and only deal in one kind of product, while others are more general and allow you to purchase and sell a variety of goods. We're acclimated to a certain kind of market now. In the market we are accustomed to, prices are predetermined and can be accepted or rejected wherever we go. For instance, if apples are $2 a pound at the grocery store, you can choose to stay or go. You are not allowed to object or bargain for a lower price. So those are the typical markets that we are accustomed to. There is a different kind of market, and it is known as an auction market. In an auction market, buyers and sellers compete based on the prices they are willing to pay for a product and the offers they are prepared to accept in exchange. Imagine going to the grocery store and instead of seeing apples in a basket at a fixed price, you found 20 different persons who each held an apple and offered to sell it for $2. I'm willing to sell my apple for $1.90, someone else for $1.85. The other person may reply. Therefore, the price that each seller is prepared to provide you for the apple will be the point of competition. 
Then, instead of simply accepting or rejecting, every buyer declares, well, I want to buy an apple for one dollar. Another person might add, I want to buy an apple for one dollar. Additionally, consumers are bidding against one another for the price of the apple at the same time. Therefore, it is clear that would never be feasible in a grocery store or the kinds of markets we frequent. But the stock market operates exactly like that. The marketplace is an auction. There are no fixed costs. The highest bid is what the buyers are willing to pay for that supply of that goods. Additionally, sellers make offers based on how much they are ready to accept for their stock or goods. This is how prices are set. And it all happens simultaneously and continuously throughout the trading day. That is what a stock market is right now. Therefore, that will be our main focus throughout both this video and our coming videos. There are currently two different markets. There are two markets, the primary market and the secondary market. What is the key market right now? The initial market on which equities trade is known as the primary market. So when a stock is first issued, it is made available to the general public. The principal market is that one. After that, it trades on the secondary market every other time. Thus, it is essentially used. You are in the secondary market each time the stock has been traded as used stock, meaning someone else held it before you. Now, when a corporation is private, that is how it operates. And let's return to our previous example where we said you started a business selling electrical appliances and you decided that you had your initial electrical business that was making about $100,000 annually and then you went private, right? And you got $5 million of revenue to open a much larger business that was making about $2 million annually. Imagine for a moment that you wish to continue. You want your business to expand even further. So you want to make yourself known. You wish to acquire a much larger company in order to go from private to public. Now, if you want to go public, you'll need to secure funding. You'll need to conduct an initial public offering, BIPO, which is what we do. Let me put that here. In this video, we'll just see the basics for initial public offering or IPO. And this ought to be included in our future videos as well. Therefore, you must do an IPO. Your company's equity will be sold to the public for the first time through an initial public offering. You guys might sell a portion of the company you own with investors to the general public, okay? And the general public will pay you for it, allowing you to increase your revenue and expand further, right? How then do you conduct an IPO? It is necessary for you to work with another organization, an underwriting firm. In doing IPO, underwriting firms essentially specialize. They will therefore enter, look at your organization, and inform you that you are generating $2 million in revenue after seeing you and talking to you. The plans you have are as follows. We can probably give you $100 million if you want to expand here or there. Want this much money, have this much debt, and your product sells for that amount. Therefore, they were going to calculate how much they could receive from you through an IPO and what the optimum price would be for them to sell your stocks for. Right away, you want them to be able to sell you the number of shares you wish to sell. They are specialists in that. Thus, and it goes without saying that the business will want to pay you the highest sum of money you can think of without exceeding your reasonable request. Since they will have a terrible reputation if they ask for too much and your IPO fails and you are unable to obtain that money. To retain their reputation, they want to be able to sell all the shares while also getting you the greatest money possible. Therefore, it's crucial that they determine the exact price and sum of money that they can afford. For you, correct. They might respond, okay, well, we think we can give you $100 million in this instance. To ensure that you receive your $100 million, we will sell 1 million shares. They intend to proceed in that manner. Therefore, when they choose to sell those million shares, it will take place on the primary market. As a result, this organization, the underwriting firm, will phone all of their contacts, including their brokers, banks, and significant insurance firms that they are familiar with and with whom they have a relationship. They will inform them that they have a new business. It is known as VRN. They produce excellent electrical goods, and they are destined to be a great business. I own some stock. I have 100,000 shares available, and if you want some, I will allot you some shares. And they'll sell those shares to other relationships. This will be the shares initial sale, which will take place in the primary market. Therefore, those businesses 
brokers and anybody else who receives shares can distribute some of those shares to their most important clients. Therefore, if you run a large brokerage firm, you might acquire part of that company's shares who could get the IPO price. For instance, when Snapchat or Facebook became public and they moved from here to here, who was able to purchase in the main market? Very few peoples. We failed to obtain any because they are so difficult to obtain. A lot of people were unable to obtain any because you had to be a very large client or a very large corporation. Therefore, we don't often trade on the primary market. Due to the difficulty, we hardly ever obtain shares on the primary market. For you to obtain shares on the primary market, you must be someone very, very big. Now, there's a date when the stock begins trading on exchanges once those shares are sold in the primary market, which we'll explore in our next videos. However, the secondary market for these shares opens when they begin trading on that exchange. Thus, the only time you or I make a purchase on the NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange, these stocks were secondhand and were already sold. They had already gone public. The secondary market is where they are. These days, we buy and sell them from other people who once owned them. We are not the first individuals to ever get them. You have shares in the main market when you are the first person to ever acquire them. You are in the secondary market when you are not the first to acquire them. Therefore, since we are not the first to obtain stocks, we will always discuss the secondary market while buying and selling securities. Is that correct? So, in essence, this is what is stock in a market are. And that concludes this video. We will speak with you in our following one. You can comment on this video about the subjects that interest you and you want us to make videos on. Thank you so much for watching our channel. We really appreciate it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more great content. If you like this video, and you can also check out our previous videos, links for those videos are in the description. We release new videos every week, so be sure to keep watching. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.